Um, sometimes you'll also have a, a return parameter there. So it might, uh, down here, you have at return, and we'll tell you it returns a string. Uh, sometimes you'll also have documentation as to what uh, functions it uses. Uh, you'll find that particularly on longer functions. If you're wondering what else is getting called inside of this function, you might find some notes about that. Yeah, it really just varies depending on how old the function is, how complete the documentation is. So, one, uh, one thing really to note, uh, WordPress uses a convention where uh, you'll find functions that are prefixed with an underscore. So, in the go back one, the function here is just the content. You will encounter some functions where it's underscore something. And as it says here, uh, those are not really intended for you to use. Odds are that when you come across one of those functions, there is another function somewhere in core that actually references that, and that's the one that you're intended to be using. So if you were to come across one of these, you really want to go out and try and find then what that is supporting. There are really good, uh, really likely that there's something that won't happen there that should, that that function is part of. So perhaps it's inside of the query, and this isn't something you're supposed to touch, you're supposed to interact with the query by a different way, uh, things like that. It's really, when you see things with an underscore, you want to go and find where that gets used because you're uh, probably going to run into issues if you try to actually use those in your code. Okay. So, um, getting into some of the conventions around how uh, WordPress organizes these things, using the media functions in WP admin as an example. Um, they're broken down, the names start to make sense uh, as, as you look at the files more and more. Um, but the first part is really understanding where to look. Uh, so WP admin has its own includes directory. And, and then there's also WP includes. You'll find a lot of functions are in either WP admin or slash includes or includes, and the distinction is made based on where they're intended. If it's a function that is, should only ever be used in the admin, you'll find it in there. If it's something that can be used either in the back end or in the front end, you'll find it in WP includes generally. Uh, looking at the naming conventions with things, uh, using media as an example, all of the functions that you interact with to upload media, uh, crop an image, add alt tags, change the title of an image, those things, those are all within uh, include slash media. And when you do the uploading, you are in WP admin slash media view or media upload or media.php if you want to look at the things you've already uploaded. The functions for resizing and showing the images on the front end, those will be in WP includes slash media. So again, really just emphasizing how things are separated. Uh, understanding how those things are organized is going to help a lot when you go start searching for these things knowing that you don't need to worry about looking at WP Admin if it's a function that's used for, say, rendering the featured image uh, assigned to a post. Um, another great example here, and this comes up on the WP Hacker's mailing list and in, uh, in support forms often, people will try and use some of the internal WordPress functions in places they don't belong. And one that seems to come up a lot is functions around meta boxes. And uh, meta boxes are uh, when you're in the post editor, you have the, uh, the editor itself, and then down below you've got a, a meta box that lists out the comments or the comment counts, things like that. Uh, the revisions is uh, when it's there, turning commenting on and off, things like that. The boxes on the side that list all of the categories you can assign, the tags, and so on. This function is not intended to be used on the front end, which is why it's in WP admin slash includes slash template. And the, uh, so people will try to use this, they wonder why their site throws a fatal error because it's never intended to be used on the front. When you're using the metabox function though, I, in theory, you're taking data in there and then you want to save it in some way. So perhaps you've added a custom field for uh, a post's old URL if you've migrated it from a different site or a different crumbling structure. With the action of actually saving that uh, information, that is in a file in WP includes. The idea being that you want to be accessible outside of the admin. Perhaps you're running an import script that isn't run in the admin, it's run in the command line. You're 
running a site where you take uh, content submissions from uh, visitors. Uh, they could suggest a post, fill out a form of some sort, it's getting saved into the database. That needs to be accessible both uh, in the front end and in the back end, which is why you'll find that in WP Includes. So again, if it's data that you're, if, if it's a function involved with presenting something to the user that is only in the admin, you'll find it in WP Admin slash Includes. If it's something that you could potentially use either in the admin or on the front end, you'll find it in WP Includes by much. Okay, so WP Includes, it's a kind of an intimidating directory the first time you open it. It's uh, 103 files as of, I think that says a version 3.3. Three. Um, I gave you a presentation the last time 3.4 was so I don't believe it. Uh, broken down into sort of three broad categories in how the functions are made, the files rather are made. Uh, you'll have classes, which are uh, things like the simple pie, the HTTP API, WP error. Uh, you'll then have functions that are used for templating, displaying things to the user, so the content, the title, the permalink. Excuse me. Uh, those fall into the category of templating, and again, these are rather broad, uh, which we'll get into, but for purposes of discussion, it's easy to, uh, sort of, it's helpful to define these now. Uh, the last one is what I refer to as the functional files because I don't know that better term for it. Uh, and it's things like get the title, get the content, uh, functions related to image handling, image manipulation, things like that, they fall into the functional category. So when you're in WP includes the classes, the class files, all start with class dash. So class dash WP is the WP class. Class dash simple pie, same thing. So that in, in almost every case, the name of the class that's inside of that file is in the file name itself, which if you know that you're looking for the HTTP class, you're looking for class dash HTTP, and so on. Same thing with simple pie, that's the example there. You've got class dash simple pie, which shockingly enough is the simple pie class used for uh, dealing with RSS Thing to keep in mind that most of what you find, if not all of what you find in the, the, the files that start with class dash, there is somewhere else in core a function that is actually intended for you to use to interact with them. The classes are there because they need to be, but HTTP is a great one where you don't need to actually uh, instantiate the class, access that directly. If you want to get uh, content from a remote site, there is a wrapper function that allows you to do that. So you don't need to set up all of the uh, configuration around the HTTP class. That's done for you, you just call the function. One of the other nice advantages with that is that there's a lot of uh, enhancements and other things that happen to make sure that before you go out and make the request that your server has the support you need, things like that. So they really, the classes are there, but by and large there's some other way why that you're supposed to interact with that. This is where one of the first sort of gotchas comes into play with how WP includes is organized. So the class files, you will find certain classes that are not in one of those files. A notable example is the query class, WP query. Everyone here is probably familiar with that. You've seen in WordPress or you've uh, written your own where you do new WP query to kick off a new query. That's not, there is not a class called class-wp-query. And the example, the, the reason for that is that you're intended to actually manipulate that. That's not something that is locked away sort of behind a helper function. It's perfectly okay and acceptable in WordPress to go ahead and create a new query. So if you wanted, for example, to show related posts or posts in the same category, things like that, and you want to do five of them, you do a new query in order to get those an example of why you won't find a class dash WP query, but you'll instead find that in just query .php. Next uh, broad class is the templating functions. And again, this is more or less anything related to displaying your content to the user. The content, the title, the post thumbnail, things along these lines. They by and large, the functions in here start with the. So, really nice convention that WordPress has where um, things, if it echoes or outputs its, uh, its data directly to the browser, it starts with the, and you'll find it in one of the template ones. 
in the same categories also the functions that get the different parts of your theme. So you're building a custom theme, you've got a common header, a common footer, and a sidebar and things like that. You're using the different functions, get header, get footer, get sidebar. Those are also in templating functions. By and large, these files end with dash template. So here's a little bit of an inconsistency. The class files start with class dash, the template files end with dash template. That's done largely so that things are organized in a logical way within WP includes, so that you wouldn't have all of the templating functions grouped together in the T's. Uh, they would be, and I'll get, uh, get a bit into this more, but they're near the related functions that they tie into. And if you're looking for sort of a, an analog to the codex for this, the template tags section of the codex more or less encompasses what you'll find in the template files. And then last, this is really a catch-all for anything that doesn't fall into one of those uh, two other categories. These are functions that by and large they return something. So when you're uh, creating a theme, you can call the title. You don't have to echo it, it just outputs the title of this post to the browser. Underneath that, there's a function called get the title that actually goes and gets it from the database. That returns it because you may want to get the title and then do something to it before you output it. Perhaps you want to use the title, yeah. I was going to say, in, uh, in an attribute on, a, on an image, but there's actually a function for that. But that sort of thing, if you wanted to uh, get a permalink of something, for example, and pass it to a different function, things like that, you have get permalink, you can then do something with it, pass it off, and then echo it somewhere else if you want. Everyone with me so far, more or less, hopefully? Uh, really long. So, <coughs> I touched on that briefly. The functions that start with the, those will echo the function, uh, their content for you. These can only be used inside of Google. So inside of that if have posts, while have posts, the posts, that's where you have to use the title, the content, the permalink, and so on. If you aren't in that context and you're trying to use those functions, you are going to get potentially weird results. You're, you will find oftentimes the data that you're getting back and that is not what you anticipate. And that's because those functions only get set up when you are inside of that loop. So that's really why you have, you have the content and get the content. What the content does, it takes the data returned by get the content and echoes it. It applies some filters and things to it but that's really why you've got the two different ones, is just different use contexts. Any questions so far before we get into some more specifics? Okay. Uh, yeah. This might be really basic, but as far as modifying these files, so you have a function that exists in one of these PHP files, are you actually modifying it in the file, or are you creating it somewhere else inside You don't ever want to modify anything that's in WP Includes, WP Admin, any of the files in the root. If you're making any customizations to a site running WordPress, you want those to either be in a plugin or a theme within WP Content. It's a really bad idea to modify core files because what you then end up having to do is either not upgrade to the next release. So if, for example, you uh, were running WordPress 3.4, modified core and then 3.4.1 came out, there were some security vulnerabilities that were addressed in there. You now either have to make those modifications again or not upgrade, leaving yourself open to security risks. So it's really a, a, a bad idea to ever go into core and modify those files. There's no folder structure inside WordPress where you would place your modifications. That's the WP content folder. Oh, the WP. So, yeah, within WP content, what you'll find, there's a, in a sort of a standard installation, you have a plugins directory, which is where you take uh, anything you get from the WordPress.org plugins repository, or if you purchase a plugin from, uh, from a developer, that would go in there. Uh, your theme would go in the themes directory, and by default, you'll get uh, 2011 shipped with it, and when 2012 comes in the next release, you'll get 2012 by default. Anytime you are customizing uh, WordPress in any way, your customizations go in WP content. There's 
One exception to that, and it's the WP config file in the root, and that's because you need to go in there and enter the credentials for the database, so the WordPress credentials, and then the database and store your content and its options there. But otherwise, anything that's outside of the WP content directory, you really shouldn't be modifying. Okay. Anything else? Uh, what about Robbins? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> There are additional things. So out of, out of the box with WordPress and Content Directory, you have plugins and themes, uh, two directories in there. WordPress then has ways for you to over, overload certain functionality. So uh, for example, if you want to use a different database uh, type or you want to connect to multiple databases, there's a way to put um, a file into the WP Content Directory that will override things that are built into WordPress. And there are specific things that can be used as drop-ins. The most notable one is uh, db.php, which again would let you change how you're interacting with the business. But that's, uh, that's getting a little bit beyond what, uh, <laughs> what we're uh, talking about here. Uh, if you've got more questions about that, you can see me afterwards. I'll be around and uh, talk about the fun drop-ins. <laughs> Caching is another one that uh, goes in there. So getting into specific files, these are five that you probably uh, will interact with on a pretty regular basis. Uh, Formatting.php has a lot of really neat functions for uh, sanitizing and escaping data, doing different, I mean, name it less, formatting things, but uh, this is something you use after you've taken data either in from a form that you want to save into the database, or you're then outputting some data to, uh, to the end user through a theme or a plugin. Query.php has everything related to querying the database for posts. So when you hit the home page of your site or you uh, go to a, a single post on your site, WP query is what actually goes to the database and gets to those posts. Everything related to that is in query.php. Post.php has the functions related to actually saving posts, updating posts, things of that nature. Whereas post formatting, uh, sorry, post-template rather, has the functions related to getting, uh, getting that content back for use on the front. So this is another convention that you'll find in WordPress. A lot of times you'll have a, a file and then right below it there's one that starts with the same thing and it has a dash template. And that is, it, it indicates that these files contain related functionality, the latter of them uh, containing things that are intended to be used to output that data that you manipulated or received somehow through the, uh, the related file. And then plug that PHP, we'll talk about a bit more. This is one that as you start to spend more time getting familiar with, with, uh, with Core, you will come, uh, run into situations where there's a function you know exists because you've used it, you've seen it in some other context, perhaps you're looking at a theme or a plugin that someone else built and you know this function exists, but you're not finding it in any of the places where you expect it to be. Odds are it's in plugable.php. I'm going to talk about that more, but that's one thing, excuse me, one thing that's really important to keep in mind because you'll save yourself a lot of frustration if you know that it could be hiding in that file. So, you know, everybody needs a meme. Uh, Formatting.php has all of these great functions for escaping and sanitizing. And this is one thing that is really a, a bit of a mantra within the WordPress community is don't trust the user. Don't assume that the data they're entering in a, in a custom meta box that you added to the post. That if you're expecting they're going to put a URL in there, don't assume that they actually put a URL. If you're looking for a, a number, so you're working on something where you want to order posts uh, in some custom way and have them be able to specify a numeric order, don't just assume that because you intended for them to enter a number there that that's what they've actually entered. You, uh, you want to use the functions that are available to make sure that the data <coughs> they're uh, entering is, uh, is what you're expecting. And it's a security concern is really what it is. So if you had that custom field again and you weren't doing any sanitization and you escaped into it, Someone who is a little creative could actually start to run arbitrary PHP through that because PHP doesn't know when you hit submit and that data gets passed around, 
PHP has no idea that you were expecting this to be a number and it's not. It is just going to do whatever, whatever it would naturally with that data. So perhaps it executes a database query and drops all of the tables in your database and suddenly your site is gone. Things like this. It's a, um, Yahoo recently had a big password breach. This uh, was because they had a search form, at least this uh, was the theorized, they had a search form where they weren't doing any escaping or any sanitization of what was entered. Someone was able to run a database query and get a copy of at least a portion of their users' data, something like 400,000 users, because they weren't sanitizing. So, in formatting.php, some things you'll find in there. Uh, these functions, uh, the first six that start with six up here, start with sanitize. What this is going to do, you would pass that data that the user gave you through one of these functions, and it is going to make sure that the data is clean and safe to be saved to the database. So a great one, that text field example, you are taking a URL for, uh, a legacy URL for this post. You want to pass that through, uh, that's actually better. So you have a, a field, <laughs> Uh, perhaps you want to be able to put a, a subheading or a subtitle on posts. So you've added a meta box where they can enter text. So you have the post title and some, some subtitle. You want to put that through sanitized text field. You know that you want uh, to accept anything that's valid to be placed inside of a text field. You don't want to accept uh, PHP uh, commands and opening brace for PHP, things like that. Uh, Good with that. Sanitized title and sanitized title for query are used to clean up the post title. So things that are allowed, uh, allowed values in a post title. Uh, sanitized user is an example. If you were uh, dealing with user creation, it will sanitize the username to make sure that the value, the, the content that it is safe for what WordPress allows in a uh, user. Uh, sanitized HTML class is one that's used if you were outputting allowing them to enter custom uh, CSS classes for something. Whatever it may be, perhaps you're driving some uh, styling based on that, so you give them the drop down, you know, this could be have red or blue or something. You can use sanitize HTML class to make sure that the uh, value that they're passing you is permissible in uh, an HTML class. So the sanitize functions generally uh, generally speaking, are intended for when you're saving data into the database. The flip side to that, when you now have this data and you want to output it, there are these escaping functions uh, for it, which are listed down here. And what this does is it, again, makes sure that the data is the expected type that you're looking for. So escape attribute, this first one here. If you're putting, uh, say, that, that subtitle into an HTML, HTML attribute on a link, for example, You've taken that CSS class uh, that you sanitize using sanitize HTML class, and you now actually want to output that on something so that the color they chose actually shows up. That's escape attributes or escape editor. You have that URL, that legacy URL field. You have escape URL. And this is one place where the convention breaks down. So uh, generally, the functions that start with ESC underscore are intended for outputting things to the database. Escape URL raw over here on the side, that's one exception. That is intended to be used to save that, to clean that up to be saved into the database. So you, they specify the URL. When you, they hit save, it goes through SQURL raw, it's saved into the database through your code. And then when you go and output that somewhere and actually do something with it, you put that URL back through SQURL, and you know that the URL is safe for whatever you're using. This is only a small handful of what's in there. There are, the file is something on the order of 3,000 lines long. And a lot of really useful functions are hiding there. It's definitely something to take a look at because odds are, someone's already created a function in there that will do a lot of the common things that you need to sanitize, saving you a lot of time writing custom code and trying to account for different scenarios. What is a valid uh, username, for example? What are the uh, valid uh, characters that can appear in an HTML class and so on? And there's so much more in there. There's a, a sanitized loop as an email function in there too for sanitizing email address. But that's definitely 
for all of the escaping data validation, things like that, you'll find that at formatting.php. Next, query.php. Again, this is where you're getting your content back from the database. This is the WP query class. It is everything related to the loop. So when you have if have posts, while have posts, that function have posts is in query.php. When you create a new query to show five posts on the sidebar for this current post, new WP query is in here. Um, get posts, <laughs> and here's where the, the function is. Uh, this is a, just a, another example, a list of the functions you'll find in here. Uh, one you probably most likely encounter are the conditional tags. If it, uh, is home, is front page, is singular, and so on. They're in here. Again, it's all related to getting the data back and where you are within WordPress. You'll find all of that stuff in query.php. A couple of uh, exceptions. Query posts is not in here. Get posts and get posts are not in here. And we will get to that in just like So query.php has the, the class itself and some helper functions around it. Some of the functions that are specific to dealing with posts, like get post and get posts, things for getting the children and so on, uh, post formats, the status, those are in post.php. The functions for setting post status, adding and updating post meta, those are things, those are in post.php. And again, continuing on with this convention, if it relates to the post itself, it, you'll find it in post.php. If it has to do with getting the posts back from the database, you'll find that in query.php. You can start to see a bit how things are segmented within WordPress to keep uh, keep related functionality in the same file and also keep file uh, lengths somewhat manageable. Yes, uh, get post to get posts and some of these things could all go in query.php, but it's not logical to group them there, and at some point the file just becomes too long to be manageable, really. Just how you end up with 103 files that are broken out in this way, it makes things a bit more manageable and easier to find, generally speaking. Uh, other things that you'll find in here, if you want to look at how post types are registered, uh, custom statuses and things, that's in here. Uh, what you don't find in post.php, though, are the template-related functions. Uh, those are in post template. So again, continuing on that uh, that convention, you've got post for actually dealing with saving the things, uh, updating meta and such. And then when you go to output it, you'll find that in post template. So sort of covered this already. The one exception with uh, with post template is that you, uh, things you don't find in here are the post thumbnail functions. Those are all in their own files. There's post thumbnail template and uh, yeah, post thumbnail template. I believe there's also a, just a post thumbnail uh, file that has the functions for actually setting and getting and so on. And that again, I think was the, I don't know the reason behind it. My guess would be that because it was added so late in uh, in WordPress, they wanted to make sure to keep those functions separate to continue with the organization and not clutter the post uh, post template. Uh, but. <clears throat> so more examples of the, the convention, the links manager, things related to that are in bookmark.php and bookmark template. Functions for comments are in comments and comment templates, uh, comment template rather. Uh, those are the, the naming conventions that are uh, pretty well adhered to within WordPress. And now, exceptions because there's always an exception. So user functions, and this is going to be a, a point of frustration as you start to get into developing uh, custom solutions. Users and authors are split into really uh, three main files and then that local thing that we'll talk about. <coughs> so author template has everything related to displaying author information to the end user. So if you want to get the author's name, the nickname they've chosen, any of the data they've entered on their profile, author uh, template is where you're looking. If you're looking at what a user is able to do, you're going to find that in capabilities. You'll also find it there, I believe this is where 
when you uh, get users' information, that comes with capabilities because it doesn't just get the name and so on for the user. It also tells you that this user is a contributor. Uh, creating users is, I believe the creating users, however, is in user stuff yesterday. And I should, should have taken a look at that before I got up here, but three functions where user, uh, three files rather, where user related functions are. We'll sort of find those a little split out. Um, the other notable exception to the organization is taxonomies. And this has largely to do with the fact that custom taxonomies are a fairly new addition to WordPress. So originally we had categories, we had tags. That would be the only two taxonomies we had for organized content. 2.9 gave us, 2.8 or 2.9, I can't remember now, gave us custom taxonomies. So they had to sort of rethink how some of these things are organized without breaking too much. So, Category PHP covers both categories and tags. So that's a, a really nice uh, point of confusion there. If you're looking for uh, get category, get uh, get tags, things like that, that's a category PHP. You want to display the categories and tags to the user, that's in category template.php. If, however, you register a custom taxonomy uh, for the example that's used often in in the codex has to do with books. You would have books and then uh, say the authors and so on. If you've registered custom taxonomy for whatever it may be, those things are all in taxonomy.php. You register your custom taxonomy using register, uh, register taxonomy. That's in taxonomy.php. What they did when they introduced custom taxonomies is they left the category and tag functions in there. Nothing ever comes out, it just gets deprecated. But the idea being that we're never going to break WordPress by removing a function. The functions in category and category template, by and large, now just call a corresponding function in taxonomy.php. So when you're getting the tags assigned to a post, it's actually calling uh, one of the, the functions in taxonomy.php. And it's just telling it, without you having to do anything, that we're looking for tags. That's the taxonomy we want to look at. So it, maintains backwards compatibility, but they really are all calling taxonomy.php. So as you start to dig around and, and trace how does this function get the data that it returns, odds are really good that it goes from category or category templates into taxonomy.php. <coughs> Okay, I'll talk to you. 
basically the pluggable PHP and then uh, wrap up. And I, if you've got questions, since I have four minutes left, uh, I can take questions out of the hall. Um, Pluggable.php, as I, I mentioned before, has a lot of things that are uh, would normally uh, you would think would be in one of the other directories, and they're not. Uh, they're the pluggable. The reason is that they're made available to themes to override. So. WP Mail is one, Get User Data is another, where you could write your own uh, WP Mail function. Perhaps you want to use SMTP instead of PHP's uh, Send Mail. Things like that, you, they're made available so that you don't actually have to hack the port. Again, this is getting back to not touching what's in WP Includes and WP Admin. Um, the place in the global, knowing that this exists, is helpful because you will run into situations where you know, for example, the get user data exists. You've used it to get user data before, and you can't find if you're looking in user and capabilities and author template, and it's just not there. Pluggable.php is a good place to check. Uh, let's skip that one because. Okay, so that's having some issues here. But at any rate, um, I have three minutes for questions. Any questions? Yep, in the back. What was the URL again? You skipped over that slide really fast. The slide with the URL. Um, I'm not sure. There you go. Yeah, uh, right. So the slides uh, are up actually already at thinkwoods.com. I gave this presentation last month at WordCamp New York. Uh, I'll also tweet out the link again for people to grab. Any other questions? Yep. What kind of tools do you use to So that was actually the slide that I skipped. Um, thank Daniel, who's sitting over here, for uh, getting me hooked on app. But uh, using this is a command line tool for searching through the code base. So what I'll do, uh, and this is actually a, an example of it right here, uh, the, the command line function is app. Looking for what your uh, what it is class WP user, and it tells me that class WP user looking through here is in WP include slash capabilities. There is also a slide in here somewhere that I seem to have lost. I'm really not going to rip up this cover. Um, there is a cross reference for WordPress out there that will allow you to actually click from one function to another and trace things down. There is a slide somewhere lost in here that goes over those things. Um, but that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I tend to, uh, since I've gotten, gotten started with that, I tend to just really rely on that. It's fast and simple. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, again, I'll put the slides up, and if you've got questions later, I'll be around for the rest of the day.